Welcome to the D Show. Peace be unto you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank God. And we're here again for another exciting episode. Don't go nowhere. We're going to be talking about the purpose of why you've been created, why it's important to put down the GQ magazine and the Fakashim magazines and pick up this book to read. What's the book? Stay tuned to find out. We'll be right back here on the Dean Show. We're back here on the Dean Show with Wissam Sharif. Yes, sir. How are you, my brother? Very good. Alhamdulillah. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. All praises to the one who created us. And we are, and I'm sure the audience is very excited. Me too. To have you on the show. Your family member has been here. You're part, we're part of a big family, over yes, 1.5, what, between 5 uh, billion and 1.5, uh, 7 billion. Uh, Noman Ali Khan, your brother-in-law. Yes, yes, sir. Family, he's been here, you're here, and we're together. And we're ready to go. All right, all right. So, uh, you know, the time just flies by, so we're going to get right in it. Sure. This topic, for a lot of people, is taboo. You know what? Because they got money on their mind. Yes, sir. They got women on their mind. The women got the men on their mind. And dunya, this material world, is hypnotizing people. We talk about purpose. We talk about the fulfillment of what your purpose is, why you're in this life, because we're all going to die and we're going to be accountable in what we did in this life. So we brought you on the show to help us cover this very important topic. And everything we cross-check with the verbatim Word of God, and that's the miracle of Islam, the Quran. Exactly. So can you talk to us a little bit about why it's so important that a human being should take a time out. You don't have to be a monk in a room sitting praying all day, right? No, you don't. But, you know, be the best at whatever career you practice. Mm -hmm. But why is it important that you should take a time out and reflect about what the purpose of life is? Have you ever wondered why is it so important before we dwell into... Before we dwell in, uh, on deeper topics? Yes. I, if we look away from religion itself, just the fact that a human being needs to remove himself from stresses of the day, uh, that's called meditation, tai chi, yoga, and a Muslim, or even even people who go to a specific mass or, or go to the synagogue, it's a time to pull yourself away. Why is that important? Because we as human beings need to find a higher source. And like you mentioned, it's either money, material world, it's something that draws us in. But in several places throughout the Quran, and if we look in the Old Testament and the New Testament too, God keeps referring to a prayer. And we find when he's speaking to Moses in the Quran, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, Moses is asked to remove his shoes, and God says to him, and for the first time when we know, أَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Establish the prayer, which is a, a moment, those five moments, to reconnect yourself with God. And one of the most important things, we talked about it last night, it's not just that spiritual connection, but the physical connection. Every prayer has a prostration. Every prayer has a gesture that shows, I, no matter how great I am, there's something greater than me. And even just as a human being, there's a greater purpose of mankind. So those five minutes help you help you put your iPhone away for a little while, help you disconnect from Facebook for five minutes, and helps you reconnect with the earth. So I think the prayer is not just a spiritual thing, but it's a connection that makes all of us human beings realize we have to help each other, and through that we can reflect. Sometimes. We're sharing this message of purpose based on truth. Yes, sir. Giving the people proof because we love our brothers in humanity. Right. So sharing is caring. Yes, sir. So we're here to share, and the reality of death should wake some people up. Yes. We can agree to disagree, but we know that every soul, every self, every person will taste death. So why is it important, do you feel, and then again, we'll dwell in, this is kind of an introduction, just to, for the person that's maybe a little bit skeptical, yeah. and they're just like, come on, man, let's move, let's move. You know, I got the football game, you know, I got to watch that, you know, the runway models, and yeah. she's got to watch the fashion show. Why is it so important? They've been flickering through, and they, found, they caught the Dean show, and they're like, let me just give it a chance, a shot. They've been on Xanax, they've been depressed, and you know what? They need some nourishment for the soul. And they're sick of all the preachers saying, give us your money and send us five ninety nine. We'll send you this fairy dust. We don't need your money. No. We just want your time and your attentiveness. So before the reality of death comes and people are sleeping because everything is on their mind except this reality, but then death comes and they wake up and it's too late. Talk to us about this, this, this reality, death. The reality of death is inevitable. We all know from the medical standpoint, we've all experienced it. But I think God gives us a chance, an opportunity in the Quran, in the second surah, where God wants us to reflect. 
and says, death is inevitable, but then he reminds us with a very loving question, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ How could you disbelieve in a creator? How can you disbelieve in death and the inevitability of him, uh, uh, meeting him? كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ How can you disbelieve in a creator? How is it possible not, uh, uh, not to give it a little bit of attention? If he has created you and then he put you to sleep, then he gave you life. So our souls were created and we know that. There's a voice inside you right now saying, I think I know what he's talking about. I think it makes sense. But then God put those souls to sleep. And after 120 days of your mom knowing she was pregnant, God blew that spirit into, the angel brought it to your mom. And that was your life. So how can you not reflect on death? How can you not reflect that we are going to end? No matter if our life is made of gold, it's going to end at some point. So that's our reflection on the necessity of death. The necessity for human beings to realize there is an end to everything. And I think that's where we're going to pick up today. And, and, and one more thing before we cut into this. Some people just say, oh, he died in peace. You know what I mean? He might have been the most wretched person. We know God is the most loving. Yeah. And if you turn to him with all these just atrocious sins, with a sound heart, you turn to him and you seek his forgiveness alone. He'll forgive. But now you just turned away from his signs. You know what? You, you denied. You did every corrupt moral thing and you broke the moral code of, 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 of God. And now they're like, he died in peace. Do, do people just leave this earth and die in peace and you just enter paradise and, you know, or is there consequences, day of judgment? You know, talk just, just briefly, you know, the reward and this reality of paradise. Right. That glad tiding of bliss and seeing your Lord and everything you want beyond your imagination, then the hellfire. Right. We can't avoid that. We can't avoid punishment, but I think, again, if you're just watching this as a TV show, and it's just something you're flipping through, hell in heaven is, is, is abstract. Hell, hell in heaven is, is far away. So let's think about it here on earth. If someone does something wretched, and they're cheating people, they're hurting people, they uh, have, um, I could say, illegal, illegal work, they're selling drugs, or they're just hurting people in the society. When they die, and we say they died in peace, we're peaceful because that wretched person is dead, but that person has to then go and he's accountable. Just like if I by accidently drank poison here on earth, no one would say he did it by accident, he's dead. They would say, well, the laws of nature, that's it, he died. Mm -hmm. So when we break moral law, when we break that moral code, whatever ethical system you use, but we know that code is written by our God, our God, the Creator, when you break that, there is consequence. So if you take two things, reflection, and you take the inevitability of death, then you can say, God has asked us throughout the Qur'an, and even in the Bible, He talks about paradise so much, but He describes it. And I think that one of the best things we can do is look at the signs around us. Look at beautiful scenery, look at the beautiful things of this world, and know that if you are allowed to have this here, imagine what's waiting for you with a little bit of constraint and a little bit of control. What's waiting for you in the hereafter? A, a little bit of self-discipline, right? Yes, sir. You discipline yourself to be in school, to be a doctor, and you'll not go to the parties, you'll relax, you'll study, study, study. A little bit dis a discipline here to be of good moral conduct, living by a good moral code so you can be the best of mankind. For obeying God. Obeying God. For the society. For society. Right. Just becoming a doctor, sometimes one person might, like, might not say that's, uh, that's a small goal. But when you're a moral person, what that does is it, it benefits the society. And that's one thing we, I want in today's show, I'm praying, that someone leaves saying, this is not about the self, this is about the community. And how can I and what I do benefit the community? So and that's what that. we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about purpose, to be the best human being that you can be. And we're going to give you the formula here on The Dean Show, God willing. We'll be right back with more. Back here on The Dean Show with our special guest. We're talking about purpose. We have one shot to get it right. It's the test of life. We want to do good, be good. And it's not according to our desires. It's according to the one who created everything in this universe. And that's the one creator that Jesus submitted to, that Jesus called the people to submit to, Moses called the people to submit to, Abraham, Noah. All the messengers that were sent, they came with the same message. Don't worship yourself, your desires, a nationality, power, money, fame, a man, a woman, but worship the one who created man and woman, the one creator. That's simple. It's something that is not complicated. No. 
and we are wanting proof now. The people want proof. Okay. So how can they know? You mentioned Quran. We know yeah. that that's the literal verbatim word of God. Right. Right? So how can people, we want to give them a taste. They read every other book. And if someone says, your mother left you a note, you know, and you never met her, you'd want to read that note. If it was in another language, you would learn that language. You would learn the language. Come on. But this is the only book compiled over 23 years. We have it. It's an original, right? Yes. It's memorized by... You memorized this entire book, haven't you? I'm, I'm thankful to say that, yes, verbatim, cover to cover, there are over, I'd say, 150,000 people just in the United just, um, I would say in the world, who have memorized the book cover to cover, numbers could be more. But yes, it is memorized, it is, it is, um, it is absorbed and recited on to generations. I heard millions have memorized it, today, living today. Yes, the, millions have memorized it, it's just there would be uh, about 150,000 teachers or, or teachers, schools. Yes, schools. Schools that are teaching the memorization and the implementation of this book. But the question becomes... Why memorize it? What's the, what's the importance, right? Isn't, isn't that one, one of the miracles? Yes, there are sir. many yes, miracles. Sir. It's a book that has so many signs. Not a book of science, but a book of signs. There are signs in there right. that is calling a person to reflect. So let us talk and give the people some of these evidences proved. Let's talk about the verbatim Word of God. Sure. And maybe you can also let the people hear it in its original. Because we can translate it. That's not the Quran. Right. The Quran is in the original Arabic language. So how can someone be sure they're going to put down the fashion magazine, GQ, <laughs> to read this book? Are they wasting their time? Um, I don't think they're wasting their time. But let's try to outline this in four. Gotcha. This is the Dean show. So it's not like it's abstract. You can go back and watch the um, Harvard uh, Divinity School episode. You can go, uh, and he tackles a, a great aspect of the Bible and Quran. So I'm not going to touch that. Brother Numan Ali Khan came in and did the um, historical facts. If you remember, he did historical facts. What we're going to do today is just simply logic. Uh, the Quran, the verbatim word of God, revealed through an angel to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about a very specific event. And that's 10,000 years of prophethood. Again, we, we, we might be watching and saying, oh, this is the Qur'an, Muhammad's book. Peace, uh, God's peace and blessings be upon him. But in the Qur'an, it says that not only did this book come to Noah, but in, and it goes in order. There's a key, a small element. It goes from Noah, and then we start speaking about Abraham, Moses, Jesus, until the prophet, peace be upon him. And we tackle David, Dawood, Sulaiman, Wa Ayyub, prophets that might not be mentioned in all books, but are a compilation of every mention. Now the next step is, if this one book, if this one book has the mention of so many prophets, what is it that, that one, these prophets are bringing as a message? And that's the oneness of God. Oneness of God. Oneness of God. So now let's pull it together and give logical proofs. First, God refers to us to say, if you can't find me, the unseen, Look at the scene. And he says in the Quran, min These are the signs of, of the signs of your God or your creator. Now when I say God, that has to carry a lot of weight. You have to be able to say, I understand that it is one creator. Whether you called him God, Allah, or you just acknowledged him in your heart, there still is only one God. So if we took it the step further, what is it about the Qur'an that makes it unique? Is it only the historical, the scientific proofs? Is it the fact that it's never changed, it's memorized? No, I think the fact is going to be that if you put down GQ and picked up the Qur'an now, opened it to the first chapter or to the middle chapter, and you read it and said, I would like to experience this, I would like to have an experience with this ayah, with this verse, I, that's our challenge. Our challenge is to tell people to open the Qur'an and reflect on one verse. And this is my little miracle, right, to my little feeling of what the Qur'an did for me. Open the Qur'an, read one verse, even in its translation, and then reflect on these words. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. It's a question. أَفَلَا is a, it's a question asking, why don't you ponder on the Qur'an? We ponder on molecular science, we ponder on whether the QBs, uh, whether the receiver's foot was in bounce or out of bounce. We reflect on all these tiny little things. But God is saying, reflect on this book, 632 pages, that people are claiming, you're, it says to kill and find Jews. God, let's open the book, let's read the book together. If you're going to quote one verse, then you're not looking at a manuscript. You're looking on how, to, how you can prove that you're right. 
miracle of Quran, look at all of the angles of scientific proof and all the angles of historical proof, but then do one thing to yourself. Don't let CNN interpret Quran for you. Let someone who studied it for 10 years or various people who have been on the Deen show, let them make that interpretation or at least hear their opinion as well. So the Quran has these gifts, reflect on it, read it, and have the opportunity to experience it both in the Arabic language and in the English language. Now speaking of CNN, you were actually on CNN, weren't you? Yes, sir. Now, for the people that are out there like, oh, what are these people, man? They're from, you know, another uh, uh, planet. Yes, sir. And they're coming to try to kill us. You, you, you address this myth, yes. this mis uh, notion, this fallacy, talking about, hey, Muslim, Muslim simply one who has chosen to submit to the one who created Right. Just like Moses, Jesus, Abraham, they submitted to God. They were Muslim. And address what you talked about briefly on CNN, saying we're your physicians, we're your sure. scientists. What changed the game? 19 people changed the game? How did that happen? Because we've been your doctor, we've been your x-ray tech, we've been your accountant, we've been serving you slushies for a long time. <laughs> Talk to uh, two clips on CNN, uh, two questions that were posed on CNN. Wisam Sharif, Yasser Khadi, and other prominent American clerics say American Muslims are under siege both by Islamic extremists and some U.S. conservatives. First thing was, what about jihad? What do you have to do? Well, the Quran does say jihad and then after jihad it says, you know, find them and kill them. Uh, the first thing we propose that everyone do is, we accept this is a book of God. So when God uh, gives you a set of rules, you have to realize it's going to cover everything. So the question that I pose, and I hope everyone can think about, is would you rather get into a street fight with no rules where someone can bite you and stick out a knife, or would you rather get into a ring with rules, a referee, and padding? And of course, the, the uh, reporter said, I, I would like rules. And I said, man is going to fight. Jihad is just a set of rules so we don't fight too much. Mm. And if you flip that on its head and you say, well, jihad, God says to kill. No, no, no. God is telling us when you fight because you are human beings, you're going to fight. Don't cut down trees. Don't kill women. Don't hurt those who are not fighting you. Don't pillage. Uh, there are so many rules, but how casual is it for me to sit here and be like, yeah, Adi, let's go kill everyone. I mean, Quran is not meant to be picked and choose from. Uh, one last point to kind of pull it all together. A second thing that I wanted to mention but never made it on air. A friend of mine came to me and said, why do all these prophets want to kill people? And I said, let's flip the question back for a second. I said, 10,000 years of prophethood from Noah, or we could say from Noah all the way down to prophet, peace be upon him. All of them had one message. And then when Muhammad, the last prophet, peace be upon him, passed away, thousands of opinions came, hundreds of opinions came. Would you gamble that 10,000 years of prophethood was correct or a whole bunch of man-made laws? Mm -hmm. You make the gamble, you figure it out on your own. If you don't want to go, if you want to go gut emotion, 10,000 years of prophethood or a whole bunch of people who've been fighting and killing themselves for a long time. Quran has a message. We encourage, and I encourage everyone around us to learn to touch it, to feel it, to open it, and not be scared of the actual text, not be scared that this is something foreign. Because right before you, uh, we, we cut to break, we said if it was in another language, we would have learned it. I would definitely recommend that everyone take the opportunity to at least say the words. Because if we say Jesus, I would encourage them to say these words in Arabic and just smile and say, Isa. So to say Jesus, you have to smile. And he was smiling all the time. And to say Muhammad, you have to pucker your lips. So say Muhammad and Isa. And some of these words might sound might not seem so foreign to you. Before we go to break, give them a taste of some of the medicine. They might un understand, and we'll give them the English. But what comes to your mind? Any description of the Creator describing Himself, not according to man's opinion, right. but in the verbatim word of God. Anything that comes to mind that the medicine they can hear it. Got it. Two verses stick out. Very important. It it comes in the in uh, verse number twenty six of Surah Nisa where God talks about himself and he says, God wants for us to be forgiven, to have clarity and to be guided like the nations of the past. But people who try to pick and choose from God, they break his laws and they make him an angry God. They make him look like an angry God. So he says unto us, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سُنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ That God wants three things for you. But if He had to pick one, and that's the next verse, it says, 
والله يريد أن يتوب عليكم. And it's not just a nice sound, but God says of these three things, guidance, forgiveness, and clarity, I just want to forgive. I just, God wants to forgive. So if you're watching the episode and you have some discomfort in your life, I really genuinely mean this. Ask yourself, turn to this episode and say, maybe these guys know what they're talking about, maybe they don't. But he does, right? No matter what you believe in karma, but there is someone who does, there's a creator who knows. Turn to him and say, I want this pain in my life to go away. This depression, this anxiety, the fear that I'm fat, I don't like looking in the mirror. Just stop for a second and be like, look God, I don't know what's being said, but I would like, I would like clarity in my life. I would like forgiveness in my life. That's how God describes himself. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more. God will here on The Dean Show. Back here on The Dean Show and we're discussing things that are very, very important and the Quran which is a living miracle, yes. and you describe some of these points, and if anyone takes a sincere, humble approach and reads this book, they will come to the conclusion that this is not man-made, it's not yes. by Muhammad, it's from the creator of the heavens and the earth, and it has all the facts, not fiction, to give the person to let their heart rest assured that this is from the creator. It talks about the purpose of life, is yes. there? Yes, talks about the purpose of life, talks about the necessity of uh, man to venerate something. He needs to venerate something higher. First his parents that he can see, then family. It's there, and there's one ayah in the Qur'an that does tackle this, that talks about, it is impossible. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ أَنْ يُفْتَرَى No one could have produced this book other than the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he sent it down. So yes, we, we have this message, and we're, we're praying that mm -hmm. uh, people will take a sincere look at the book and not pick and choose. Because at the end of the day, a text, it's raining outside. You're going to go outside and check if it's raining. A text that is quoting things, embryology, it is quoting the name of Haman, I think Brother Noman tackled that. Um, there are so many various points that are being tackled. If it's raining, just go check if it's raining. If this is the book of God, please open it, read it, and do yourself one favor. Before you get into the depth of giving your opinion, read the first page, the opening, and read the, f the first words that open the largest section of Qur'an. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ This is a book that has no doubt. No book starts like that. And it's a claim, but God can make that claim. Mm -hmm. So let's hopefully um, encourage our viewers to do as we do. Open the Qur'an, or, or even better, just type in a, a word into YouTube. Uh, Qur'an, the miracle. See what's there. There's going to be negative, but there's going to be a lot more positive. Tell us now a few more questions. We're almost out of time. I want to get these points in. You mentioned one God. And our good deeds are based off the principle of pure monotheism. Yes, sir. Not setting up any equal with God. The creator is the creator, and we're his creatures. We're his creation. So when we say one God, now some might worship one God, and we never want to offend anybody. We love our brothers and sisters in humanity. We want them to reflect. And think, so when we say one God, in the Quran, God Almighty, over and over, He's talking about His oneness, that just worship Him, come to Him alone, not to set up a partner with Him. So some people, they'll take this mighty man as a God, and they'll put a Holy Ghost next to Him. Is this qualify as one? It, uh, qualifying as one, again, my opinion doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? And I, I grew up studying these concepts, and I respect them. The concept of one God is that there is a sole creator. And we find this in the most powerful section of Qur'an, which is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ God is absolute. The necessity for God to have a family is, let's talk about that for a second. If God had a son, if God had a son, wouldn't He tell us? Yes, He would tell us. And through the Qur'an, He said the specific words, walada. There's no child, there's no, there's no son. But what we need to realize is if we want to look at God through this metaphor, let's even keep the metaphor of God the Father. Let's take, read the Qur'an, read the scripture that God the Father or God our Creator wants us to be as His children, wants us to be as the family of God. So then God would not need all of these partners, would not need manifestations. What we need to do is come back to the fact that there is one God and He sent us the best of mankind as His prophets. And if we change that line in the sand between prophethood and divinity, it's, it's a blur because divine prophets are just the same. 
So Allahu Samad, God is absolute, saying that there are three breaks, and God actually says in the Quran, "Wala taqulu salatha." Don't say three. God is one. There are manifestations of His mercy, manifestations. When you look at your child, you might you might feel an inclination. This is a miracle. This is beautiful. It's a miracle that God didn't need for Himself. It's something He gave to mankind. The feeling or the inclination for reproduction and the feeling of love. God created us in the image of love. So we are there. Uh, last question. Uh, we, we, the signal we're almost out of time. Easter is coming around. So now, uh, what is the Islamic stance as far as we know that every human being is accountable for their actions? Right. So now does God, because people are celebrating that Jesus died for your sins and he, God died and then came back and etc. What, what do we have to say about this? All we have to do is, to all of our viewers, we encourage them to look up what Easter is. That's all we encourage to do. For if one passed away on the cross, we would understand this from a historical point of view. But we don't. It, it, it's the, the proof is not in the pudding. Uh, we encourage everyone to understand what Easter is and whether Jesus was crucified and what happened uh, on that day. But from a Muslim perspective, the Islamic stance is Jesus was not crucified, but his resurrection will come and he will return to the people. I encourage in these days not to tell you to worship, uh, celebrate Easter or not. I encourage you to look up what Easter is mm -hmm. and know what it is that we celebrate. So Islam is saying submit only to the Creator yes. in our last uh, 30 seconds and you're accountable for your actions. Yes. Nobody's paying your bill. You've got to pay your bill. The, what you did against God, turn to God and repent only to Him and no second no or third... No original sin, no confession. When Adam ate from the tree, God forgave him immediately. There was no original sin. I'd like us to... Maybe put, put some more time into that next yeah. time. Yeah, okay, so uh, if people want to uh, learn Quran, if they want to look more into Quran, you have a website? Sure, for... it's a, a simple website. It's L2RQ, that's Learn to Read Quran, L2RQ.com. It's a site that will help you with letters, it'll help you with pronunciation, and if you are amongst those who can read and recite well, it'll help you better your recitation. May God Almighty the Creator reward you, and we look forward to having you back again on the Dean Show. Thank God you very much. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Well, peace be with you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Where'd you go, Eddie? I'm here. Have you consider the purpose of life? Look out for the bumper stickers that we have. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Muhammad who had the idea for this. And if you're not thankful to the people, people, you're not thankful to God, to the Creator. And that's what we're calling you to do. Deep down in yourself, as the guest said, look, look, just ask the Creator to guide you. He'll facilitate a way. He'll facilitate a way. He's the most loving. And we need to take a time out from the rat race of life and reflect on what the purpose of life is. And if you'd like to pick up the verbatim word of God, call us. Even if you'd like to accept the way of life of all the messengers of God, believing in only one creator, not setting a partner next to him, it's only God. We're his creatures, his creation. You only do the direct dialogue. No secretary, no one in between, just you and the creator. Give us a call. Operators are on the line to ask your questions. 1-800-662-ISLAM. We'll see you next time here on the Dean Show. Peace be with you.